it has come to my attention that some of you are not very familiar with this part of the world. Uh, so I thought we could take a look at exactly what's going on in terms of geography. So this is a map of the Mediterranean Sea, Di Zonghai. Uh, you're probably more familiar with this side, right? This is Portugal, this is Spain, France, Italy. Uh, and then we get to Greece and Turkey. The entire story of the Odyssey really only takes place in this part. So let's take a closer look at this part. Uh, in the Iliad, the whole story be, uh, takes place in Troy, uh, which is on the coast of Turkey. And in the Odyssey, Odysseus has to get from here to his home in Ithaca here. So it's from the very east of Greece to the very west of Greece. Uh, and as you can see from this map, the most direct way to get there is to follow this line here. But of course, uh, this doesn't take 10 years. Odysseus makes Poseidon angry. Poseidon blows him this way and that way. So he goes to all of these different places. I'm pretty sure he doesn't get to Italy. That's another story for another hero. But he, he gets blown to all of these different places throughout Greece. And that's why it takes him so long to get here to Ithaca. So like to us, it looks like a small part of the world. But for them, uh, they're using boats with sails and oars, hua jiang gen chuan fan. It's not that easy. OK, uh, and the other thing I wanted to tell you is that I have updated the PDF on Moodle. Previously, it began here with page 109, and so you don't get the full summary of book nine. So I went back and I uh, found the previous page. So this is the full summary. Uh, so if you wanted to read the full summary of book nine, you can re-download the PDF from Moodle. OK, let's take a look at this week's reading. Page 123, book 11. The Dead. Odysseus continues his story. We reach the sea. So they have just left a -ye -ye, uh, after Circe tells them how to get to Hades. We reach the sea, and first of all, we launch the ship into the sparkling, salty water, set up the mast and sails, uh, and brought the sheep on board with us. Because remember, he has to sacrifice the sheep. We were still grieving weeping in floods of tears because uh, all of so many of his men had died but beautiful dread circe dread here means terrible terrible means powerful because she's a witch a goddess but beautiful dread circe the goddess who can speak in human tongues tongue means language sent us a wind to fill our sails. Fair wind befriending us behind the dark blue prow. Prow is Chuan Sou. Hey, can you open the door? My microphone is too short. We made our tackle ship shape. Tackle is uh, all of the smaller sails, all of the navigation equipment, all of their the stuff on the ship. We made our tackle ship shape, then sat down. The wind and pilot, Zhang Duoren, guided straight our course. Remember, when we use uh, language related to airplanes today, all of that language was taken from sailing. So a pilot is not just someone who flies a plane, it's also someone who guides a boat. All day the sails were spread. The ship sailed onwards. The sun set. It was dark in all directions. 
We reach the limits of deep flowing ocean where the Sumerians live and have their city. So they reach the end of the world, basically. Their land is covered up in mist and cloud. The shining sun god never looks on them with his bright beams. Not when he rises up into the starry sky, nor when he turns back from the heavens to earth. Destructive night blankets the world for all poor mortals there. A blanket, tanzi, as a verb, means to cover entirely. We beached our ship, so we put our ship on the beach, drove out the sheep, and went to seek the stream of ocean where the goddess had told us we must go. Eurylochus and Perimedes made the sacrifice. So notice, it, the poem says that they go to Hades, but where is Hades? It's not underground like most of us think. It's at the far edge of the world. Uh, either way, it's a place that most people should not be able to go to. And this is, I think, the only place in Greek legend where Hades is not actually underground. In all the other poems and legends, it's called the underworld. For some reason, in this version, it's not. Uh, so anyways, they reach this place at the far end of the world. They get out of their ships. They make a sacrifice. And then, I drew my sword and dug a hole, a cubit widthways and lengthways. I poured libations for all the dead. So he's uh, here Odysseus is following the directions from Circe. First honey mix, sweet wine, and lastly water. On the top I sprinkled barley and made a solemn vow that if I reached my homeland, I would sacrifice my best young heifer still uncalved and pile the altar high with offerings for the dead. I promised for Tiresias as well, a pure black sheep, the best in all my flock. So that part is repeated from the previous book. So with these vows, I called upon the dead. I took the sheep and slit their throats above the pit. Black blood flowed out. The spirits came up out of Erebus and gathered round. Teenagers, girls and boys, the old who suffered for many years, and fresh young brides, Xingyang, whom labor destroyed in youth. So uh, he's talking about women who died while giving birth. Uh, to, when, when a woman starts giving birth in English, that's, it, uh, we say that she goes into labor. So here labor is not work, labor is birth. And many men cut down in battle by bronze spears, still dressed in armor, stained with their blood. From every side they crowded around the pit with eerie cries and guidreda. Pale fear took hold of me. I roused my men and told them to flay the sheep that I had killed and burn them and pray to Hades and Persephone. Persephone is uh, Hades' wife, the queen of the underworld. Uh, she has her own very interesting legend that we don't have time for today. It's in the mythology book if you're interested. I drew my sword and sat on guard preventing the spirits of the dead from coming near the blood till I had met Tiresias. First came the spirit of my man Elpenor, who had not yet been buried in the earth. So this is the young guy who died last week. We left his body in the house of Circe without a funeral or burial. We were too occupied with other things. They were busy trying to leave. On sight of him, I wept in pity, saying, Elpenor, how did you come here in darkness? You came on foot more quickly than I sailed. Uh, so notice that he's supposed to be talking to Tiresias, but this is someone that is even more important to Odysseus 
than the guy he's supposed to talk to. Because this is Odysseus's own man. This is someone Odysseus should be leading and taking care of. Instead, he finds out this guy has died. And so he's meeting him here in Hades. So he says, how did you get here so fast? And uh, Elpenor, he groaned in answer, Lord Odysseus, you master every circumstance. Uh, this is not a very good translation into English, but the idea is that he is in control of every situation. But, but I had bad luck from some god, and too much wine befuddled me, too much wine confused me. In Circe's house I lay upstairs, and I forgot to use the ladder to climb down from the roof. I fell head first. My neck was broken from my spine. My spirit came down to Hades. By the men you left, the absent ones, and by your wife and father who brought you up from babyhood, and by your son Telemachus, whom you abandoned alone at home, I beg you. So now he's asking Odysseus to do something. Uh, when you ask someone for something very serious, it's kind of like you swear a promise to them, right? You want to invoke some kind of authority to give this uh, seriousness. So like in, if you swear, you might say, I swear by the Bible, I swear by my mother's grave. Here he's asking by all of the men and people that Odysseus cares about. So the idea is, if you really care about these people, then you will do as I ask you to do. So like he's invoking uh, the, his men who have died, his wife, his father, his son. These, all of these are the Odysseus' most important people. So what is he asking? I beg you, when you sail from Hades and you dock your ship again at Aea, Please, my lord, remember me. Do not go on and leave me there unburied, abandoned, without tears or lamentation. Lamentation is grieving, idol. Or you will make the gods enraged at you. So this is interesting. He's not asking for himself. He's asking to prevent Odysseus getting into more trouble. The idea is that uh, life and death is a religious part of uh, life experience. So it has to do with the gods. If you don't do religion correctly, the gods might get angry. So he's telling Odysseus, uh, give me a proper burial so that the gods uh, won't blame you for this. So what is a proper burial? Burn me with all my arms. Again, or not again, but arms does not mean like your two arms. Arms means weapons. Burn me with all my weapons. Wu qi. And heap a mound beside the gray salt sea. A mound. So in the future, people will know of me and my misfortune and fix into the tomb the oar I used to row uh, I used to row with my companions while I lived an oar chuanjiang so he's saying after you pile on the dirt on top of my burned body stick my oar into the tomb as a sign that this is where somebody has been buried na chuanjiang dang na ge fen bei So the word fix does not mean uh, to take something broken and to make it better. Fix means to uh, put in place. In Chinese, gu ding. Poor man, I answered. I will do all this. We sat there talking sadly. I, on one side, held firm my sword in blood, while on the other, the ghost of my crew member made his speech. Then came the spirit of my own dead mother, Autolycus's daughter, Anticlea. 
whom I had left alive when I went off to holy Troy. So when he left for Troy, his mother was still alive. And this is the first time he knew that his mother had died. Can you imagine like you only learn that your mother has died when you see her ghost? Nobody has told you. You don't have any news. You have to find out like this. On seeing her, I wept in pity. But despite my bitter grief, I would not let her near the blood till I talked to Tiresias. Right, so notice that Elpinor, his crew member, also did not drink from the blood because Circe says to wait for Tiresias. The prophet came holding a golden scepter, Quanzang, and he knew me and said, King under Zeus, which means Odysseus, adept survivor, which means he's very good at surviving. Why did you abandon the sun, poor man, to see the dead and this place without joy? Step back now from the pit, hold up your sharp sword so that I may drink the blood and speak to you. So the logic is apparently um, the dead have to drink from this blood and wine in order to ha regain their past memory so that they have something that they can tell Odysseus. So without drinking it, they can talk, but they don't have important information. The only exception seems to be Elpinor because he has only recently died. So his memories are still with him. At that, I sheathed my silver studded sword. A sheath is a dao chao. So to sheath as a verb is to put your sword back into the sheath. I sheathed my silver studded sword. When he had drunk the murky blood, the famous prophet spoke. Odysseus, you think of going home as honey sweet, but gods will make it bitter. I think Poseidon will not cease to feel incensed, which means angry, because you blinded his dear son. So here he's talking about the Cyclops, Dui and Druso. You have to suffer, but you can get home if you control your urges and your men. Turn from the purple depths and sail your ship towards the island of Thrinacia. There you will find grazing cows and fine fat sheep belonging to the god who sees and hears all things, the sun god. Uh, the name of the sun god is Apollo. I'm not sure why the poem doesn't give us his name. Apollo, Apollo, Taiyangsun. If you leave them be, which means don't touch them, keeping your mind fixed on your journey home, you may still get to Ithaca despite great losses. But if you hurt those cows, I see disaster for your ship and for your men. If you yourself escape, you will come home late and exhausted in a stranger's boat, having destroyed your men. So, so what is he saying here? If you touch the sun god's sh uh, sheep, you will lose all of your ships, you will lose all of your men, and you will only get home with the help of a stranger. And you will find invaders, Ru Qingzi, eating your supplies at home, courting your wife with gifts. Courting here means zuichou. Then you will match the suitor's violence and kill them all inside your halls through tricks or in the open with sharp bronze weapons. Uh, so we're not going to read the part where they meet the, sh the sheep. So I'm go just going to tell you, he warns, uh, Odysseus warns his men not to touch the sun god's sheep, but 
Poseidon is still mad at them and has prevented them from moving on for a long while. And they're thirsty and they're hungry. And when they finally reach the place and they see the sheep, all they see is food. So even though Odysseus says, don't touch the sheep, when he goes to sleep, his men kill some sheep. Uh, Apollo gets really angry and chases them away again. And everything Tiresias says here happens exactly like he says. When Odysseus finally reaches home, he has lost everything. He has even lost his own clothing. Uh, and he has to depend on help from friends. The interesting part is um, at this point in the story, he's telling his story to those friends who are going to help him. So if we ignore prophecy, if we ignore destiny for the moment, and we just think about this as a human situation, what this part is saying is, uh, Tiresias told me that I, this would happen and I would have to depend on friends to get home. Here I am, I don't have men, I don't have ships. So according to that prophecy, you, my friends, have to take me home. He's basically using his story to ask for help. Again, he's a master storyteller. And he's not even asking for help. He's saying, the gods tell me that you will help me. Which is much more powerful than simply asking. Right? If I asked you to like put away your phone, you might be like, oh, but I don't want to, whatever. If I said the president of the university is right outside and he wants me to ask you to put away your phone, it's much more powerful, right? That's what Odysseus is doing. Uh, okay, uh, with sharp bronze weapons. Then when those men are dead, uh, we read this part already. Go away, take an oar, no knowledge of the sea, do not salt their food. Did, did we read this? Okay. When those men are dead, you have to go away and take an oar to people with no knowledge of the sea who do not salt their food. So they don't add salt to their food. This is kind of like when Confucius said, uh, right? It's another kind of person. It's another country, a different kind of people. They never saw a ship's red prow, nor oars, the wings of boats. So the wing here means the sides of boats. Apparently Greek boats had uh, extending sides uh, into the water, I should say, extending into the water to keep balance. So these people have never seen a boat. I prophesy, which means I give you the prophecy. I prophesy the signs of things to come. So this sentence means, I'm giving you a prophecy. Believe me. When you meet somebody, a traveler, who calls the thing you carry on your back a winnowing fan. So at this point, he's carrying an oar, right? Chuanjiang. But if someone calls it a winnowing fan, a fan that you use to separate the wheat from the shaft, fen chu liang you de yi ge san zi. Then fix that ore in earth and make fine sacrifices to Poseidon. A ram, an ox, a boar. Boar is ye zu, wild pig. Ox is she niu, or not she niu, like she niu. Ram, we last week talked about, is sheep, yang, goat. Then you will go home and give holy hecatombs to all the deathless gods who live in heaven, each in order. A hecatomb is an animal sacrifice. So a hecatomb, uh, he does not specify what kind of animal, So which means you can take any proper animal it will do. It doesn't have to be a specific kind of animal. Uh, but the idea is then you will go home and you will sacrifice to all the gods in order. Gentle death will come to you. Far from the sea of comfortable old age, your people flourishing, so it will be. So now Odysseus knows what's going to happen at the end of his life. 
I said, Tiresias, I hope the gods spin out this fate for me, but tell me this and tell the truth. I saw my mother's spirit sitting in silence near the blood, refusing even to talk to me or meet my eyes. My Lord, how can I make her recognize that it is me? At once he made his answer. That is an easy matter to explain. Whenever you allow one of these spirits to come here near the blood, it will be able to speak the truth to you. As soon as you push them away, they have to leave again. Uh, I think what the translation is trying to say is whenever you push them away, they will forget uh, what they have told you. Again, memory is connected to blood and life force, seming li, which is the blood sacrifice. So the ghosts have to drink and acquire some kind of life force in order to truly communicate with someone who is alive. With that, Tiresias, the prophet's spirit, was finished. He departed to the house of Hades. So he, he went back into uh, the rest of the ghosts. I stayed rooted there in place until my mother came and drank the blood. She knew me then and spoke in tones of grief. So again, for this scene, imagine you only just found out your mother is dead and you want to talk, you're now talking to a mother you had previously thought was always still alive. Imagine the shock and the heartbreak. And she says to him, my child, how did you come here through the darkness while you were still alive? This place is hard for living men to see. There are great rivers and dreadful gulfs including the great ocean, which none can cross on foot. One needs a ship. Have you come wandering here so far from Troy with ship and crew? Have you not yet arrived in Ithaca or nor seen your wife at home? So like, again, you're talking to your dead mother and the first thing she does is expresses her concern for you. She's dead, but she still cares about you. I answered, Mother, I was forced to come to Hades to consult the prophet spirit, Theban Tiresias. I have not yet come near to Greece, nor reached my own home country. I have been lost and wretchedly unhappy since I first followed mighty Agamemnon to Troy, the land of horses, to make war upon the people there. But tell me, how was sad death brought upon you? By long illness? Or did the archer Artemis destroy you with gentle arrows? The footnote tells us that Artemis, the goddess of hunting, is associated with the death of women. So the idea is, did you die because of sickness or, be, or while doing a womanly uh, duty? Tell me too about my father and the son I left behind. Are they still honored as the kings? Or has another taken over, saying, I will not return? And tell me what my wife is thinking and her plans. Does she stay with our son and focus on his care? Or has the best of the Achaeans married her? Again, his focus on knowledge. He wants to know. My mother answered, she stays firm. Her heart is strong. She is still in her house, in your house, and all her nights are passed in misery and days in tears. But no one has usurped your throne, Chan Wei. Telemachus still tends the whole estate unharmed and feasts in style as lords should do, and he is always asked to council meetings. Telemachus is his son. So basically, uh, his mother is telling him he is behaving like a good king, and they treat him like a good king. By the way, again, at this point, Odysseus uh, is telling his hosts what he has learned from the underworld. But 
if he is making up all of this just to tell a good story, then this is the part that he's hoping to see when he gets home. He's hoping that his wife is still loyal. He's hoping that they treat his son like a king. I, I keep repeating this point, right? He's telling a story. We don't have any evidence for this story. We can either believe him or not. Your father stays out in the countryside. He will not come to town. He does not sleep on a real bed with blankets and fresh sheets. In winter, he sleeps inside by the fire, just lying in the ashes with the slaves. His clothes are rags. In summer and at harvest, so goes Sijin, the piles of fallen leaves are beds for him. He lies there grieving, full of sorrow, longing for your return. His old age is not easy. And that is why I met my fate and died. The goddess did not shoot me in my home, aiming with gentle arrows, nor did sickness suck all the strength out from my limbs with long and cruel wasting. Uh, waste here means uh, to waste away. No, it was missing you, Odysseus, my sunshine, your sharp mind and your kind heart. That took sweet life from me. She died because she misses him. His father can is barely alive because he misses him. But because this is ancient Greek epic, we don't get to see inside Odysseus's mind. We only see his reaction. And his reaction is this. Then in my heart, I wanted to embrace the spirit of my mother. I wanted to hug her. She was dead and I did not know how. Three times I tried, longing to touch her. But three times her ghost flew from my arms like shadows or like dreams. Sharp pain pierced deeper in me as I cried, No, mother, why do you not stay for me and let me hold you even here in Hades? Let us wrap loving arms around each other and find a frigid comfort in shared tears. Frigid means cold, cold comfort. But is this really you? Or has the queen, here meaning the queen of the underworld, sent me a phantom, a ghost, to increase my grief? She answered, Oh, my child, you are the most unlucky man alive. Persephone is not deceiving you. This is the rule for mortals when we die. Our muscles cease to hold the flesh and skeleton together. As soon as life departs from our white bones, the force of blazing fire destroys the corpse, the body. The spirit flies away and soon is gone, just like a dream. Now hurry to the light. Remember all these things so you may tell your wife in times to come. If the scene of Hector visiting his wife and family before leaving to go back into battle is the most powerful scene in the Iliad, then this scene where Odysseus meets his dead mother and can't hold her, can't touch her, is the most powerful scene in the Odyssey. As we were talking, some women came sent by Persephone, the daughters and wives of warriors. 
they thronged and clustered round the blood. I wanted to speak to each of them and made a plan. I drew my sword and would not let them come together in a group to drink the blood. They took turns coming forward and each told her history. I questioned each. Uh, we can skip this part. The legends that they talk about are all very interesting. If you're if you're if you want to learn more about ancient Greece, you can read about these legends in the mythology book uh, or online. Let's skip to page one thirty. Line 331. Remember, this is Odysseus talking. He says, I cannot name each famous wife and daughter I saw there. Holy night would pass away before I finished. I must go to sleep on board the ship beside my crew or else right here. I know the gods and you will help my onward journey. And then a closing quotation mark. Guan Bi Ying Hao. He stops telling his story. They, his audience, they were silent, spellbound, Shan Zao Mi Sidu. Listening in the shadowy hall. A hall is Da Ting. White armed Arete spoke. Phaeacians, look at him. The Phaeacians are the his audience. That's what the country is called, uh, Phaeacia. Phaeacians, look at him. What a tall, handsome man, and what a mind. He is my special guest, but all of you share in our rank as lords. So do not send him away too fast. And when he leaves, you must be generous. Ah, Areti is the queen. So this is the queen talking. You must be generous. He is in need, and you are rich in treasure through the will of gods. The veteran roaming, Achaeus, the oldest man in their company. Uh, company here just means group of people. The oldest man in their company said, Our wise queen has hit the mark, my friends. Do as she says, but first, Alcinous must speak and act. Alcinous is the king, so the king has to make the decision. The king said, let it be as she has spoken, as long as I am ruler of this nation of seafarers. Uh, a seafarer is someone who knows how to sail on the sea. So Phaeacia is a country of sailors. I know our guest is keen to go back home, but let him stay till morning. I will give all his presents then. You men will all help him, but I will help the most since I hold power here. So Odysseus says he needs to go sleep, but the king says, no, 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 I want him to keep talking until morning. Then we'll send him away. And so Odysseus gives his very polite answer, which is, uh, I would gladly stay, and then I will want you to give me things and send me on my way. Please let me go. Uh, so let's skip that. Alcinous replied, Odysseus, the earth sustains all different kinds of people. Many are cheats and thieves who fashion lies out of thin air. But when I look at you, I know you are not in that category. <laughs> This is kind of like uh Bushi kinds of pudding, kind of pudding the kind of like that. Uh, is Odysseus telling the truth? Who knows? Uh, but when I look at you, I know you are not in that category. Your story has both grace and wisdom in it. You you sounded like a skillful poet telling the sufferings of all the Greeks, including what you endured yourself. 
Of course, he sounds like a poet. This is a poem. Uh, so I guess this part you can say that the poet is praising himself. But come now, tell me if you saw any spirits of your friends who went with you to Troy and undertook the grief and pain of war. The night is long. It's not time to sleep yet. Tell me more amazing deeds. Shiji deeds. I would keep listening until bright daybreak if you kept on telling the dangers you have passed. Odysseus answered politely, King Alcinous, there is a time for many tales, but also a time for sleep. If you still want to hear, I will not grudge you stories. I will tell you some even more distressing ones about my friend who managed to escape the shrieks and battle din at Troy, but perished later killed in his own home by an evil wife. So he recontinues his story. Holy Persephone dispersed the ghosts of women and they went their separate ways. The ghost of Agamemnon came in sorrow with all the rest who met their fate with him inside Aegisthus' house. Aegisthus uh, is his wife's lover. That's the name of her lover. So notice he calls Agamemnon and everybody around him who died. He says that they died in Aegisthus' house, which is the house that he stole from Agamemnon. He recognized me when he had drunk the blood. He wept out loud and tearfully reached out his hands towards me, desperate to touch. His energy and strength and all the suppleness his limbs once had were gone. I wept and my heart pitied him. I cried out, Lord of men, Agamemnon, King Agamemnon, how did you die? What bad luck brought you down? Was it Poseidon rousing up a blast of cruel wind to wreck your ships? Or were you killed on dry land by enemies as you were poaching their fat flocks of sheep or cattle? Poach uh, here means to hunt illegally, like stealing from somebody else. Or fighting for their city and their wives. How did you die? He answered right away, King under Zeus, Odysseus, survivor, no, Poseidon did not rouse up a, dead, a dreadful blast of wind to wreck my ship. No hostile men on land killed me in self-defense. It was Aegisthus who planned my death and murdered me with help from my own wife. He called me to his house to dinner and he killed me as one slaughters an ox at manger. So like you kill an animal, uh, like you kill a, a cow, um, I guess for food in this case. A manger is the place uh, where you feed your cows and horses. Ma Tsao. What a dreadful death. My men were systematically slaughtered like pigs in a rich lord's house for some feast, a wedding or a banquet, Wan Yin. You have seen many cut down in war, in thick of battle, or slaughtered in a combat, hand to hand. But you would grieve with even deeper pity if you could see us lying dead beneath the tables piled with food and wine. The floor swam thick with blood. I heard the desperate voice of Priam's daughter, poor Cassandra, whom deceitful Clytemnestra killed beside me. Cassandra, uh, it also has been cursed. Uh, she has been cursed by the gods to have the power of prophecy. She will always know what's going to happen, but nobody will ever believe her. That's her curse. So even here, at the very end, she dies alongside the man that she could not warn because the gods had cursed her so that he would not believe her warning. 
as I lay dying, struck through by the sword, I tried to lift my arms up from the ground. That she-dog turned away. And this is a very pol uh, polite translation. That bitch turned away. Uh, he's talking about his wife. I went to Hades. She did not even shut my eyes or close my mouth. There is no more disgusting act than when a wife betrays a man like that. That woman formed a plot to murder me, her husband. When I got back home, I thought I would be welcomed, at least by my slaves and children. <laughs> Notice he puts his slaves together with his children. Uh, this is an interesting point. The idea that children are young and precious and full of promise, that idea was invented in the 19th century. Before that, children were just annoying. They're still annoying. She has such an evil mind, and she has poured down shame on her own head and on all other women, even good ones. Okay, that's a bit much. It's probably not fair to blame all good women for something that his wife did. But you can tell how angry he is. I cried out, curse her. Zeus has always brought disaster to the house of Atreus through women. Uh, Agamemnon is from that house, the house of Atreus. It is true throughout the history of this house, uh, the women have always caused disaster. Many men were lost for Helen, and Clytemnestra formed this plot against you when you were far away. Uh, if you remember, uh, Helen was stolen from Menelaus, and Menelaus is the brother of Agamemnon. So they're both from the house of Atreus, uh, both suffering for women, not in a good way. Uh, at once he answered, so you must never treat your wife too well. We looked at this section. Uh, well, let's look at the middle part that we didn't look at. Uh, do not let her know everything you know. Tell her some things, hide others, but your wife will not kill you, Odysseus. The wise Penelope is much too sensible to do such things. Your bride was very young when we went off to war. She had a baby still at her breast who must be now a man. He will be glad when you come home and see him, and he will throw his arms around his father. That is how things should go. My wife prevented my eager eyes from gazing at my son. She killed me first. Uh, and then we also looked at this part. I have a final piece of sound advice for you. Take heed of it. When you arrive in your own land, do not anchor your ship in full view. Move in secret. There is no trusting women any longer. But have you any news about my son? Is he alive? Is he in Orchomenus or Sandy Pylos or with Menelaus in Sparta? Surely my fine son Orestes is not yet dead. So he got home. Agamemnon got home, but he still doesn't know what happened to his son. What a poor guy. Um, let's stop here. But the question that he asks, what about my son Orestes? There is a long, tragic story about what happened to Orestes. For the original audience of this poem, they would know that story. So this question is a very delicate question. It's a question whose answer uh, is a very powerful answer. But at this point, Odysseus just says, uh, I answered Agamemnon, why ask me this? I do not even know whether he is alive or dead. It is pointless to talk of hypotheticals. So Odysseus doesn't know, but the audience does. Uh, basically, the story is like Orestes' mother killed his father. So to take revenge for his father, he kills his mother. But you can't kill your mother for obvious reasons. Uh, and when you, if you kill your mother, the gods become angry at you. And so then the gods got angry at Orestes and he had to run for his life until finally um, Athena, the goddess of practical wisdom, came down and held a trial for him. And uh, this legend is the beginning of uh, objective justice in ancient Greece. Not just based on revenge, but based on what is right and what is wrong. Okay, uh, next week is a holiday.
before two weeks later, please finish this handout.